During the playing of the national anthem, I would ask that you place your right hand over your heart while the military members will stand at attention. We will begin today's ceremony in just a few moments. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Jen Bolton, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. On behalf of the 914th Air Refueling Wing Commander, Colonel Joseph P. Casino, welcome to the 914th Maintenance Group Assumption of Command Ceremony. Today, the men and women of the 914th will welcome Lieutenant Colonel Carmel R. Weed Jr. as he assumes command of the 914th Maintenance Group. This morning, the 914th Maintenance Group is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Francis Dixon and is organized into two squadrons. Commanding the maintenance squadron is Major James Smith, and commanding the aircraft maintenance squadron is Lieutenant Colonel Jessica Desert. Ma'am, give the group attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of our official party and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem.
bless them under his leadership. Sustain them as they collectively answer our nation's call. I pray and ask to sing the name of Thank you, Chapel Rump. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ma'am, please put the church in these. Presiding officer for today's ceremony is Colonel Joseph P. Cantino, Commander, 914 Eric Aaron Road. The official party for today's ceremony includes Colonel Cantino, Lieutenant Colonel Barbara Lee, Incoming Commander, 914 Clayton Street, and Group Chief Master Sergeant Joe Burko. Before we begin today's ceremony, we would like to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guests and dignitaries in the audience today. Lieutenant Colonel Lee is joined by his wife Susie and two of their three children, Lainey and Ella. Griffin and his wife, Sadie, are not able to attend today. His father, U.S. Air Force retired First Sergeant Rudy Lee, thank you for your service. His sister, Karen, her cousin Mike Moody, his nephew, Cole Moody, and his sister, Carla Harrod, and niece, Savannah. Other distinguished guests in the audience are Deputy Commander Colonel Kent, Dwayne Chief, Dwayne Command Chief, Chief Timmons, MS Chief Commander Colonel Roberts, OG Commander Lieutenant Colonel Bob, and our IG Colonel Burgess. Modern assumption of command is back to the 18th century. At that time, organizational flags were developed with colors and symbols unique to each military unit. The soldiers of the unit would dedicate their loyalty and trust to their commander, symbolized by his flag. When a change of command was to take place, the outgoing commander would pass the flag to the individual assuming command. This gesture was accomplished in front of the unit so all could witness their new leader assuming the duty position. This tradition has survived throughout military history. The transfer of the flag to Lieutenant Colonel Carmel R. Reed symbolizes the assumption of command at the solemn military ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce Colonel Joseph P. Cantino, Commander, 914 Eric Grimway. What a beautiful day, isn't it? Of course, it's true. Um, wow, uh, we, we had a, a pretty big boy without a maintenance crew commander, as all these folks know. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I did not mention uh, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Zapata, who stepped in, thank you Scott, and really uh, did us a service by leading the maintenance crew in absence of commander. So I was, just, I was in search mode for quite a while looking for um, a maintenance crew commander. And this is a very difficult place. I don't know why it is. Some of it is, it's, it's, it's a pay status as a GS-13, as a crew commander is kind of high. So what this, what, the way I look at it is this buffalo really weeds out the narcissism. You guys gotta really want to do this for everything but yourself. Unfortunately, people that wear birds or silver oak leaves and wings or maintenance badges, unfortunately, um, are just chasing rank, they would check the box, and usually Buffalo is not on the top of that list for a box checker. Is hanging on. Well, I don't want people like that anymore, because usually, very rarely, are those folks also the leaders? Of course, this is me talking. This is my opinion. Uh, but I think uh, I did some calling around during search mode, and I heard of this guy that kind of speaks his mind. I like that. It's not that way. 
and right on some feathers at headquarters. Got my ears perked up. I like it. Uh, Test the two star off. Now I'm like, okay, all the reads did. A friend of mine, uh, Colonel Parks, down at uh, Georgia, at the Dolphins, pilot trained buddy of mine. I gave him a call and I asked him to help on my lead. And I could be, he couldn't, he couldn't say anything about it, I'm sure. But he's like, you know, really, this phone call, I should be really saying much bad stuff because I'm a loser. So, then I thought I'll well, just go directly to the source. I called you. I called Jeremiah Weed, which is a whiskey. <laughs> uh, and we kind of hit it off on the phone, and here we are. But this is no small test, as you know. Everybody in this room knows this is not a small test. Group command, uh, Air Force structures changing. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're heading, headed towards a system for those civilians in the crowd. Uh, it's called an ASAP command structure, which is new to the main level of how we command the Air Force. And according to my boss, three-star General Keeley, he wanted this to happen eight months ago. So, in the last few conferences we had with him, it's like, not only are you not doing this, but it should have been yesterday. So, we have kind of had a conversation about that, and what it does is it removes which sounds bad, but it, it's really not. It's gonna, it, there's deputy commanders that take the role of group command. Well, anyway, the funny part of the story is, he's like, hey boss, you know, my family's coming up for this assumption of command ceremony. If I'm not gonna be a group commander, I don't know if we should have it. I'm like, no, that's not bad. So here we are, he's a group commander, he's in charge of all these people, and even when the ASAP does happen, he's gonna have the same responsibilities and the same position. The only thing that changes is the title. So don't worry about that. In fact, you're probably going to have to focus on So congratulations. <laughs> uh, but we're taking this command at a very, very difficult time. And the folks I lead, and I'm really speaking to the civilians here, but I'm speaking to everybody, if you've already heard of this, about uh, 80 to 100 years of experience. Hard times make hard people. Hard people make good times. Good times make weak people. Weak people make hard times. One thing Chapman said is a word that's thrown around all the time, but it's sacrifice. It's easy to say that word. It's hard to All of us do it. All of us. TRs and full timers. It's a huge sacrifice for families. It's a huge sacrifice. If you're a narcissist, because you can't come first, you are last. This ain't about me, it's definitely not about you, it's not about any of you, it's not about you. We serve the public of this country, it's about them. You know, taking care of airmen is, is a topic that's going to come Of course, we're going to take care of it's not about you either. It's about the defense of this country and the people that pay their taxes to have confidence in the fact that we will come to their defense. And it's hard to conceptualize the hard times that are ahead because it seems like it's just something you read in a book or it's a movie. I said in a meeting I had yesterday, amicable conflict. Amicable conflict. When Iran launched those missiles just the other day, you know, they, they, had, they warned air traffic control so they wouldn't hit any civilian aircraft. That's still amicable. We're headed for non amicable conflict. And that requires true leadership. Not only from senior leaders, but leadership from the E1. And as you take command, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. As we head towards that step four, weak people are times. When I took command as the Oscar Commander and the 
committed this way. I'm going to promise to myself that anything I do, anything I say, any decision I make, I have Airman, Airman Basic E1 Joe Patino standing right next to me. What would he think? And I, I look over at him and say, you know, is that okay? And sometimes he's like, no, we kind of told Don't do that. So I don't do it. And in, in my mind, that's how I conceptualize taking care of the youngest kids and leading everybody that I'm responsible for. Prior to this, this should ring true to you too. You look left and right, look for E1 Jeremiah Reed, say, hey man, what would you do? How would you take that? Someone told me that that I looked up to many years ago. It was a prior to this and it, it rings true to me today. So, without further ado, we'll get on with it and I'll stop talking. But, big step forward for you. It's a really large leap for the family. It's a lot of sacrifice. Uh, you're just important in this leadership role that he is. Because without the confidence that he has your support, it's it's it makes it that much harder. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Constantino. Ladies and gentlemen, Central Command, and now we Ma'am, please give group attention. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force Headquarters, Fourth Air Force, Special Order Number GA270, under the provisions of Air Force Instruction 51-604, Lieutenant Colonel Carmel R. Reed, Jr. assumes command of the 914th Maintenance Group, Niagara Falls Air Reserve Station, New York. Sir, I serve command. Thank you. 
hitchhike there. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it because uh, I used to complain about that too. Uh, but I appreciate each and every one of you. You look awesome. You look like a super professional that I know you are. So awesome. It's awesome job. Alright, so uh, I believe success, well, I'm going to say something. Some other part, I don't know, my family. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a great story each week. We're talking about your family or look at your family, so I don't even know what happened. Um, without them, I wouldn't be here. Um, I'm making a sacrifice, I'm making a sacrifice. I just want to give your family to make a sacrifice for us to do you. So, so thank you all. Uh, okay. So thank you to my family for many years of moving around, allowing me to be employed. Uh, T.Y. to the tune of many years, 34, over it, she now, 34, 35. Uh, it's not been easy, but nothing easy, uh, nothing easy, nothing hard is worth doing, alright? You gotta get the ass out back and all of that, so. <laughs> it's hard to do what we do, and nothing comes easy. There's a total of five seconds paid for each thing that we do, and it's not lost for me. So I can't wait for Susan to get up here in May. It's going to be awesome. Kids, down there, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's not how it's going to be. Of course, PCS is going to be able to do it. It's going to be able to do it. So it's going to be great. Uh, so my, uh, my sister, uh, my son and my daughter will live here. I uh, sat with them. Uh, of course, see you soon. Uh, my sisters and my uh, other relatives, thank you all for being here. And we'll move on with some of this stuff where it gets all our shit. Alright, as you get older, things happen. So the 914 Air Building has a long history dating back to 1943. Many different aircraft, many different missions. As with all things, change comes. That's why we have to change. Sometimes change is good. Change for the sake of change is not a good thing. The change helps us keep thinking and growing as individuals, and that's what we're each and every one of us are going to do over the next couple of years while I'm here. Um, if you don't believe that you're growing when you're dying, you should always look for opportunities for growth. And I'll provide those to you as you provide those to me as I learn about each and every one of you. Uh, each and every one of you will play a piece of my life as I will the yours. Um, and you will be a witness in, in the things that I will do in the future as well as you guys do in the future. So, the past 12 months, I mean, if you would have told me as I was at the Keystone Air Force Base as the TR Squadron Commander that I'd be an Iron Dog and Tanner Prince. So, the word is be prepared. Opportunity knocks, you'll be able to walk through the door. I'll be waiting on the trigger. Because he wanted to wait on me. So I had to touch on us, so I came out and walked with it. This wing, this group, wow, for the past 12 months, four major inspections, just created, uh, just finished the pride, wow, and, and killed me. Uh, it was so incredible to sit back and watch that as I got the opportunity to walk around and watch each and every one of you uh, be the professionals that you are. So kudos to you. But that's just the first step. Our enemies want us to sit back and dress on laurels and be happy with the achievements that we've done in the past. But we cannot do that. The world is changing, our forces keep shrinking, and our conditions keep increasing. So, uh, the old school days of being a fat cat and having plenty of time when you're a manpower, we just don't have it. So, we've got to be innovative. We've got to find new ways to do things. Um, so, as you look around, when you see the guy, guy uh, I look for waste. Um, it's not an inherent thing, but you do. You have to kind of be trained for doing that. And I will promise you, I will train each and every one of you to look at identify waste. The most important part of our group are you, you individuals out there, and your ability to see things that aren't right, to bring those to my attention. I want you to take risks. I want you to make educated decisions on it. I want to empower you to do great things. I cannot make all the decisions. The decisions are going to be at your level. As the future is going to be used for BCW, as we go out to a different world of events that we're going to definitely have to encounter, you might find yourself as an international sergeant APG guy or gal. On an island somewhere, you might be the senior logistician there with a captain pilot, and you two are going to make decisions how flight operations go, what maintenance actions happen. You think about that. That's not, that is not far fetched. So if you're wearing the right mask, start trying to check yourself, think about what you've got. If you don't have that skill set, you need to come, you need to talk to me, you need to talk to your other chiefs out there, because we need to grow our start. Not only those people, but be those senior leaders that can lead the fight, and there's no one else around that can fight like you. Return, this is the way we've always done it. We are about to learn today. That is like a pain in my existence. Um, we have to do things better. We need to find different ways. And there's just not far enough way to do it. Each individual person out there is a speed in the area that you work in. I need you to tell me those things. I can, I'm only as good as a decision maker as the information that's given me. So please, give me all the data you've got. I will take it. I will take action. 
My job is to train and equip, to remove obstacles, to be your champion, to fight the battles for you. Your job is to make things happen. Right. I don't turn these jets, I don't fly these jets. You men and women do out there. So help me help you. I want to create a trusting team where you feel vulnerable enough to tell me, yeah, hey, I don't, I don't feel like I can do this job. I might be signed off on it, but I need extra training. You need to be a stand-up person and understand your limitations because lives are that way. When I got to uh, uh, my previous year that I got to, I didn't feel comfortable with the maintenance practices because I wasn't flying planes. Um, I'm flying this week coming up. I'm going to be on this plane. You guys and guys are awesome job. The inspectors came and said your maintenance practices are good. We just need time for a few things. Pay attention to detail. We don't cut corners here. We are going to pursue excellence. You're going to hold me accountable, and I'm going to hold you accountable. All right. And before I get to too much further off the track here, I appreciate it one We talk about different soldiers around here, but whatever, whatever, whatever is in front of us is whatever it takes to get it done. That's what we're going to be after. All right. That's our soldiers we're going to get after. So thank you all again for attending this special day. I'm really uh, proud of my families here. Thank you very much. And I'm so very happy to have you as my extended family. I truly am about relationships because I didn't get here on my own. There are plenty of people that helped mentor me and put me in this position. And I want to make sure that I provide that same uh, opportunity to share the one of you. So, uh, and it's just not long so much. I care about each and every one of you. I think about you, I care about you all the time. Um, and so you think about you, and that's just whatever. That's a long way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I I'm here for you. Uh, it's about you guys and gals. Help me help you. Thank you very much. At this time, Robert will be presented to Lieutenant Colonel Weeks, so I choose me and additional family members as they welcome you here from the men and women of the 914 Committee. Please rise for a standing for the planning of the Air Force Song for the departure of the official party. Ma'am, please. 